Hello, welcome back to the channel. The following story that I'm about to read was written by Googly Eyes 93. Thank you, Googly Eyes 93, for giving me permission to read your story. The story that I'm about to read is divided into three parts. I'm going to be reading the first part today. If you would like to read the story for yourself, I'll be putting a link in the description below so you could check it out. And also, I'll be putting a link where you could find the author's Reddit page as well, so you could check out more of his work. Gotta say, it was the last thing I expected to find going through all the crap in my grandpa's attic. After he passed, he was never much for sentiment, and even though I knew his father, my great-grandfather was a veteran of World War I, just like he was in World War II. Maybe he kept the journal out of some kind of soldier's honor, maybe a family obligation, maybe it was just forgotten, like he forgot all of us at the end. Probably would have been better had he tossed it. My great-grandfather, Will Johnson, decorated lieutenant, fought at the Battle of River Somme in France, among others. The journal was definitely a snapshot of the time. Honestly, it's kind of sad. Seeing the thoughts of a bright-eyed young boy who thought he was going to defend his country and come back to a loving, easy life, go to a shell of a man who was harrowing. I'm honestly going to skip around the first few entries because it's sad to see. The worst thing is, he was becoming that empty shell long before the terrors started happening. Sometimes the horrors of war are just as bad as what we don't know. Anyways, I'll transcribe what I can. I am going to do everyone the favor of making it a little easier to read though. He was definitely classically educated and his vocabulary proved it. Even in the middle of a damn trench, the man was eloquent. Oh, I'm also skipping around the love letters and trees he wrote to his wife. My great-grandmother. It just feels kind of wrong to share those, especially because I already felt awkward reading them. Alright, I'm going to get into it. Just a warning up front. The things he saw were pretty graphic, so just be prepared. The movies don't capture half of what he saw in the field. July 12, 1916. Today marks one week at Somme. The river still stands between us and the Germans, but we're advancing quickly. My British brethren here are hardy, with the hopes that this battle will be done soon, so they can take a well-earned leave. I pray it soon. I pray it to God as I go to sleep every few hours, taking my few free moments off watch or supply lines to shut my eyes whenever possible. Sleep came fist full at first. The sound of artillery shells falling around the trench kept me on constant alert. We've lost a few good men in the past two days thanks to artillery. Paul, one of our British allies, was standing just feet away from me when he was taken out. An artillery shell came crashing down on him as he was setting up the razor wire atop the trench. One moment he was there, stretching coils out across the dirt and mud. I didn't even blink in the time it took for his insights to be scattered on those same coils of wire, a small boom deafening me. When I looked back up to see if he was okay, I could see part of his face hanging from the razor wire, a dangling eye staring right at me. I swear, it looked like he was still there pleading for help. I couldn't even collect his tags, no idea where they ended up, and there were parts of him scattered everywhere. I clutched my rifle to my chest, struggling to breathe as I tasted the iron of his blood, spattered 
across my face. Another soldier nearby must have seen too, because his thousand yard stare was worse than mine. I still had the faculty to do something, at least. Sergeant told me to hit one of the bunks where I could actually sleep. He was unfazed by what I told him about the death. Just a sigh and a confirmation that he would record it. Another in a long line. I'm going to sleep now, though I fear seeing Paul looking at me, begging with one eye for mercy every time I close my eyes. July 13, 1916 I saw something last night, though I don't believe it was natural. We've had issues of course with wild animals coming into the field, but those are small. Foxes, deer, and yesterday a small bear, though all the poor creatures would often end up triggering mines planted in the no man's land to stop charges. I remember the bear stepping on one with a hind paw, setting it off and blowing off its back legs. It was roaring in pain, legs bloody shreds almost up to the hip. After bickering over whether it would be a waste of ammo, one soldier finally hoisted up a white flag, running across the battlefield. He was hopping over mines like skipping stones until he finally got close enough. Two shots from his pistol and the screaming from the animal stopped. He came back without incident. Our enemies likely taking pity on the animal just as we had. Guess we have something in common despite their evil. The body was left out there. Nobody bothered to take it as we would our own dead. Maybe it was the rotting corpses that attracted the evil. I was sat near the battlement we had set up. A small line in the middle so we could see out without fear of taking a bullet, though it didn't always work. The moon was out, full as well, so the entirety of the trenches and no man's land were lit with barely a lantern needed. A rain shower came by earlier, soaking the battlefield. Reflections cast from puddles made the field look like it was dotted with glowing orbs. Maybe that's how it snuck in so easily, thanks to the glow of the moon reflecting. It was only the movement of it near the bear's carcass that gave it away. The bouncing of its ambient white eyes was obvious against the backdrop of still uninterrupted water. It crawled from the river, stepping nimbly on long, nimble legs that were jointed in at least four parts. It looked like a spider almost, the legs extending far before slanting down again towards the main body. A long, slittering thing that almost touched the ground itself. While the legs were spider-like, it reminded me more of the long centipedes we would see in our house during the summers before the cat would gobble them up. The eyes grew more clearer the closer it got to where I could see that they weren't actually solid, more like a fog that was taking consistent shape, moving with the creature. It was larger than the bare carcass it was moving towards, with the eyes turning a deep crimson as it grew closer, still glowing against the moonlight. What terrified me most was that even growing closer to the bear, its back end was still in the flowing river. At least 200 meters, maybe more, still stalking towards the bear. It finally reached the carcass, immediately ducking its head into the belly of the bear. Like it was inhaling the scent of carrion, I could smell the thing beginning to rot from here in the humidity, even differentiating it from the stench of our own dead and wounded. This thing was taking enjoyment in it though relishing the feast. Don't think it took more than a minute. The damn thing reared its head, bare carcass in between two massive pincers. I could see a bristling opening just behind them, which it quickly used the pincers to push the bear into. With an assumed full belly, 
It slunk back down into the river, stepping around every mine as if it knew where they were. When it was finally back at the river, the twin moons disappeared, sinking back below the depths and blending with the full moon's reflection above. I know not how long I sat there, breathless as I watched something I shouldn't have seen. Something still gnars at the back of my mind, a feeling that whatever this was is taboo from long ago. Ancient, maybe older than the river itself, is what this thing felt like. I remember seeing some old artifacts that were brought around in a traveling museum and watching this gave me the same primeval awe that those did. I wasn't the only one to witness it either. Later, when getting my field rations for the day, Jones, one of the newer privates joining our regiment, asked me if I was on watch last night. When I said yes, he asked me if I saw it. I suppose he thought I knew what he meant, but I confirmed anyway to be safe, keeping myself subtle as to not arouse suspicion. I've seen others get locked away for lunacy, the trenches getting to them a little too much, and was afraid it was happening to me now. I asked him if he meant the bear carcass, and he replied asking about the thing that ate it. Our stories corroborated, lining up with the same descriptions, or in the same ballpark at least. Though we still had no idea what it was, he believed it was a curse for all the blood spilled here. I don't know if I believe that, but do know I'll be praying more earnestly before closing my eyes to sleep again. Hey, back to the present here. My head is killing me from trying to read his writing. The cursive he used was already super thin, but the pages have been water damaged at some point, so some words have me improvising with my best guess. I'll do some more transcription tomorrow, once I've had a chance to rest my eyes.